I'm hazy and I'm so this is a this is a uh, direct digital sensor okay um, as you can see there's a cord okay and the cord gets plugged into your computer monitor okay so this gets reused after exposure after exposure after exposure so you use the same one and what's nice is as soon as you take the image it's going to pop up on your computer screen so you don't have to take all of your images and then go to a scanner room and scan them and see how well you did okay you can instantly see how well you did all right you plug this end into the computer and then for our barrier protection we have sleeves okay very simply put this is a universal size. You put the barrier sleeve over the top of your sensor, pull it all the way down, okay? And now it's ready, okay? This can go in the patient's mouth. So this is, we don't have to set up a full mouth series. What you will have to do is pull up a full mouth series mount in your computer, okay? You'll take them sequentially and you'll see them as they pop up and as you're taking them, okay? Our XCPs are a little different. Your ring and your bar are the same, okay? But what's different is the type of bite block that you use, okay? Because these are called bite blocks, all right? We have a ring, bite blocks. Yeah, we have a ring, we have a bar, and we have a bite block. So let me get the, and as we said, posterior, anterior, and bite wing, okay? So let me just get a posterior bite block. So you would still use your same posterior ring and, and, and bar, okay? Your ring and rod, rod, bar, depends on who you're talking to, okay? Your ring and rod would be the same, but what might be different is this piece and how you put your, um, your sensor into your, into your bar. So this is what I call sliders, okay? We have two pieces. This is the bike block. This piece actually goes around your sensor. Now every office has, there's different types. There's some that stick right on here. So you would have a bite block that literally would stick on here and then you put it in the patient's mouth. You have some that have stretchy rubber bands that would stretch out and, and wrap around, okay? And then you have things like this that what I call sliders because it slides on, okay? So what happens is now the sensor is held by this, okay? And now this, is your bite block and you maneuver the bite block through these little tracks which allow you to set up your sensor okay so for instance now this is set up vertically so this is going to be an anterior so the bite block stays the same and now I, I connect it to my my rod and then I Connect the rod to the ring. Okay, so this is an aiming ring. What happens is the tube head has a cone off of it called the PID, okay? Um, and that's a pos positioning indicator device. That's what that PID is. And we line it right up to the ring. Okay, and then the beam comes straight out and hits our sensor, whether it's film sensor or PSP sensor, that's the whole concept is that this holds it into the patient's mouth and it holds your sensor parallel to the, to the teeth, okay? So it's important for us to make sure that these things stay clean because we're gonna be using this over and over again. So I'm gonna be using it throughout the patient's mouth. When I'm finished, I'm gonna take this all off throw away all this barrier, throw away these bite blocks are disposable, and then I'll have to get cavi wipes, wipe it down, and use it on the next patient. Okay, so that's why it's so important to make sure that you barrier these and keep them safe from patient to patient, okay? All right, so this bite block can now come off of here, and it can now be turned sideways, so I can use it horizontally. Just give me a sec get it right there we go because there's a little bruise in here see now how I have it set up horizontally so one bite block and you can just flip it around and slide it in and out that's how this system works like I said there's many different types of bite block systems for sensors okay but with your PSP what's nice is that you can use a regular bite block that you would use film or the PSP because this is what film looks like okay 
And as you can tell, film is really thin. Everybody can have one, okay? Film is really thin. And when you get an opportunity to touch the PSP, you're gonna pass those around. You're gonna see that they're just as thin, okay? Look how bulky this is. All right, this is difficult to get in patients' mouths. So that's why sometimes doctors won't choose um, sensors. Sensors tend to be clearer. That's what I've heard, that they tend to have a clearer, more digitized type of look to them than the PSPs. Um, and then other doctors will say, I see no difference and I'm perfectly happy with them, okay? But what's nice is that the PSPs are nice and thin, just like those films in your hand. Okay, where this is much bulkier, so I would have to put this in the patient's mouth. And now I have this cord that's hanging out of the patient's mouth. Don't get the cord in your way. Okay, so a lot of times we'll wrap the cord around the bar so that the cord stays out of the way. And then you can go ahead and take your shots without having the cord get into your way. Because if the cord gets past your, your ring, then you are... Um, like for instance, you put it in and it's like this. Well, now it's right in the middle of your viewing area, okay? But our point to show you all this today is one, to get you started with radiology and two, to have you understand infection control, okay? That this barrier would have to be on here. If it was ripped or torn, you'd have to put a new barrier on there. And then when you're finished, you can take this off, wipe this all down with cavi wipes and then you set it aside so that it dries, just like, you know, three to five minutes for it to dry, and then you put it away, okay?